Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're looking at the Omega Speedmaster Automatic Torino Olympic Limited Edition. You can see this 39mm stainless steel limited edition of 2006 pieces on our website, WatchYouWant.com. You can purchase it there if you like, and if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. Now, on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. You can see that this Speedmaster Torino cuts the classic profile of a Speedmaster Reduced, or as I like to call it, the Speedmaster Red. Now, 44.5 millimeters from extremity of lug to extremity of lug. It has a nice compact profile. Again, a 36 millimeter Rolex Date 8 or Date Just is your comparable for wrist real estate. It's also 12 millimeters thick. And the nice thing about the Torino 2006 edition is that it arrived just in time for the 20th Winter Olympics in Turin and the 2006 update to the Speedmaster Reduced. At that point, the watch received a sapphire crystal to replace the original's acrylic, and that reduced the stack height on the wrist from 13 millimeters to 12. So you can see, not only does the watch now feature virtually scratch-resistant sapphire, but it also features a lower stack height, so less likely to interfere with a dress cuff, a sleeve. You might still have a little trouble getting the tightest of sleeves up over that cantilevered tachometer, but the bottom line is that you have far more compatibility with looser sleeves, uh, jacket sleeves, blazer sleeves. This watch is just a bit more wearable in more occasions. And the watch is wonderfully light on the wrist. You have to remember that the original Moon Watch on some bracelets can span a full 53 millimeters from extremity of end piece to end piece. So this watch having a far smaller footprint is also far more wearable from an ergonomic standpoint. Moreover, the watch features a dramatically upgraded Omega 3-Link bracelet. Now you can see the polished intermediates give it a little bit of a jewelry accenting that creates an upscale look. It also features a very crisp friction fit deployment clasp, and this is a superb piece. You can see, very crisp. This one is practically unused, practically unworn, featuring the straight graining as it came from the factory, the engraved Speedmaster marquee, and the Omega corporate logo. This is an impressive bracelet that's very solid. Now, at this point in time, Omega was calling the bracelet the 1470 with 815 end pieces, and all of them feel the part of a modern full-figured, substantial bracelet. Now you can see the Omega Olympic dedication on the case back. Omega has been the official timekeeper of the Olympics on and off since 1932. And that's actually the tribute to which the dial pays acknowledgement. You can see the color scheme here, blue, red, and silver, evokes the original 1932 Omega Olympic pocket watches, which were actually reissued in the modern era, and that classic color scheme speaks to Omega's heritage. At the same time, it's wonderfully beguiling in a historical sense. You can see a brushed tachometer that removes the visual constraint of the black colored tachometer known on conventional Speedmaster reduced references, as well as the moon watch. It opens up the dial by appearing to extend the silver disc further outward, creating the appearance of a watch that's even bigger than it is. Now, everything on the dial is self-consciously styled to make this edition quite special. The red, white, and blue coloration is matched by a double scale, pulsations on the inner scale for the taking of Olympic athlete pulses, and of course, a tachometer for timing events and progress on the outer scale. Now, you can see that the sub-registers, each one inset, each one with concentric circular guilloche, feature an additional refinement. All chronograph functions feature polished hands for hours, minutes, and seconds, and all civil time hours, minutes, and seconds feature black PVD to easily distinguish the hands from each other at a glance. Quite special, the watch features a Torin 2006 dedication at 6 o'clock, as well as an Olympic multicolor five interlocking ring logo as the counterweight to the seconds hand. You can also see an applied Omega marquee and Omega corporate logo at 12 o'clock adds just a little bit more richness to the dial in conjunction with the applied and polished hour indices. Now, we saw the case back dedication, but beneath it sits Omega's caliber 3220 Alpha. Now, it's based on an Omega caliber 2890A2 with a Dubois de Praz 2020 module. What that means is that you have refinements unknown to the traditional moon watch. For one thing, the chronograph features a vertical clutch. So when you stop and start it, there's no stagger, there's no jump to the seconds hand, and because it's a vertical clutch coupling, there's no chronograph drivetrain to wear down if you leave it in motion. So in other words, you can leave the chronograph seconds hand running 
as center seconds for your hours and minutes with no hazard to the movement. Now automatic winding is another major upgrade from the original moon watch. Some people are into manual wind watches, but some just want the set it and forget it convenience of a rotor. With automatic bi-directional winding, this 46 joule movement packs a 38 hour power reserve. So once you put it on your wrist, wear it daily, set it and forget it, you get that automatic winding convenience. You can see this Omega Speedmaster Automatic Torin Limited Edition, the Torino 2006 Limited Series of 2006 pieces, 39 millimeters in stainless steel, on our website, watchyouwant.com.